Assalamu alaikum dear students I hope you all will be fine and enjoying with a good health I welcome you to the lecture number 44 Here I am Ms Sana Ismail lecturer of botany and working as a co-teacher in the department of botany at the University of Education Lahore Today I am going to deliver the lecture about polyembryony which is the one of the important topic from the subject plant systematic anatomy and development the course code of this subject is botn 1112 let's we begin our lecture so here is the course outline of this lecture in this lecture first of all we discuss about the introduction of polyembryony then we have their classification then we discuss about the origin of the polyembryony and uh, then we discuss about their causes of polyembryony the factors which causes polyembryony and their agronomical and nutritional benefits which we get from uh, the process of polyembryony at the end the references are present Uh, which helps you to uh, understand this lecture these references are used during the preparation of this lecture hopefully they help what is polyembryony as per the name polyembryony it refers to the development of many embryos when two or more than two embryos develop from a single fertilized egg then this phenomena is identified as polyembryony and the development of more than one embryo in one ovule seed or fertilized ovum is called polyembryony this polyembryony is found both in plants and animal in plants the production of two or more than two embryo from a single seed is termed as a polyembryony in plants this phenomena is caused either due to the fertilization of one or more than one embryonic sac or due to the origination of embryos outside of the embryo sac this natural phenomena was first discovered in the year 1719 by Anton van Leeuwenhoek in citrus plant seeds it is a type of apomixis where in autonomous development of supernumerary embryos takes place in the seed and consequently genetically similar progenies are developed supernumerary embryos are produced in different frequencies it may be singlet duplet triplet quadruplet quintuplet sextuplet and so on among different types of polyembryony nuclear embryony which is the diploid is the most common in this slide we will discuss that who discovered the polyembryony first of all the polyembryony was reported by Leeuwenhoek in citrus fruit as early as in 1719 then the different cases of polyembryony were studied by Prawn in 1859 In 1878 the Strasburg demonstrated the formation of plural embryos in many genera of angiosperms while with the passage of time in 1901 Ernst summarized the works done in polyembryony and classified the various means by which adventitious embryos are derived these were the scientists who discovered the polyembryony 
and demonstrated out their procedures in different citrus fruits. This divides the embryo into more than one. Classification of polyembryony. The polyembryony are divided into two types induced polyembryony and spontaneous polyembryony which are further categorized into different types. Cleavage polyembryony in this case of this type a single fertilized egg give rise to a number of embryos. Simple polyembryony in this case of this type a number of embryos developed as a result of the fertilization of several archegonia. Rosette polyembryony it is the additional embryos developed from the rosette cell in certain gymnosperms as this type of polyembryony is termed as rosette polyembryony. True polyembryony there are two or more embryos arising in same embryo sac from zygote, for example in the citrus plant. False polyembryony The development of embryos in more than one embryo sac in same ovule or placenta occur. For example, in Laurentiaceae family, the true sorry false polyembryony are present. On and according to their genetic basis, they are also divided into two types which are gametophytic and sporophytic. During gametophytic polyembryony, the arising from any gametic cell of embryo sac after or without the fertilization. On the other hand, if we talk about the saprophytic polyembryony, it is arising from zygote or initial sporophytic cells of the ovule. The polyembryony mostly occur in the citrus plant, for example, in the citrus paradisi, citrus reticulata, and in the citrus gembiri plant. True polyembryony, in which the production of embryos within or by the projecting into a single embryo sac is termed as the true polyembryony. In most cases, the synergites become egg-like to form the embryo with or without the fertilization. Then the production of embryos developed from the endipodal cell is rare. Where is the embryonic moss? formed by the basal cell of the zygote in Erectronium americanium and in the B and C section here is the differentiation of embryos from the cells of the embryonic mass where is the growing pro embryos are present this is the true polyembryony. False polyembryony. False polyembryony involves the fusion of two or more nuclei or development of two or more embryo sacs within the same nucleus. In this case, in which two or more embryos are formed as a result of the development of the aposporic embryo sac. C 
simple polyembryony which is the subtype of polyembryony the occurrence of polyembryony due to fertilization of more than one egg is called simple polyembryony the formation of extra embryos through sporophytic budding is called adventive polyembryony Polyembryony is quite common in cycas, pinus, onion, groundnut, mango, lemon and orange plant. In some of these cases, a stimulus of pollination may be required. In citrus, a seed has 240 embryos, one normal and the rest adventive, mostly nuclear. In Allium odorum, there are five embryos, all developed by different methods, one from zygote, one from synergid, two from antipodal cells, and one from integument of an ovule. So, here is another subtype of polyembryony, which is the cleavage polyembryony where the embryos arise within an embryo sac either by a cleavage of the egg or from the synergides, antipodals or endosperms. The splitting of an embryo into several identical parts, each of which is capable of developing into a mature embryo. It is seen in some gymnosperms and particularly common in pinus trees where the zygote divide from four nuclei, each of which divide to give a chain of cell which is also called the suspensors. At the tip, tip of each suspensor is a group of embryo initials are present in which embryo initials the lateral divisions are occur which divide the one embryo into a lot of new embryos through this cleavage polyembryony however from this lot of embryos only one embryo developed to a maturity level Adventive polyembryony is also known as the sporophytic apomexis, in which embryo is formed directly from the diploid sporophytic cells of the ovule, such as integuments and nucellus. These diploid sporophytic cells undergo the stages of embryogeny and then develop into the mature embryo which may sometimes result in the formation of more than one embryo within the same seed and this is, is called the adventive polyembryony this embryony develop directly from diploid cell other than the egg and this adventive polyembryony is mostly present in the citrus plant in Apuntia and it gives rise to a condition which is called the polyembryony. How the polyembryony are works? In normal sexual cycle, deprived sporophytic cell of the ovule transform to haploid gametophytic cell from meiosis, which contain egg cells that forms embryo after fertilization with male gamete. But in some plants, meiotic division and syngamy are eliminated and still a viable embryo is formed inside the ovule. 
The formation of embryo with asexual means is called apomixis and seed is called apomictic seed. Polyembryony is a type of apomixis which initiates autonomous development of embryos through asexual mode and the resulting progenies are the genetic replicas of the mother plant. In this slide, we will going to discuss about their case studies. Reports of multiple seedling developing at embryonic level in laboratory and studied under greenhouse and field conditions have demonstrated the presence of polyembryony in cultivated Siamese. The presence of two or more embryos per seed confers higher nutrimental quality because these grains have more crude fat and lysine than normal maize kernels. They generated a maize population which presented polyembryonic seed with a frequency of 1.5%. After four years later, the percentage of polyembryony in both populations averaged only 60%. So in this slide, we will discuss about the origin of embryos. The embryo may appear from synergites and antipodal cells in the embryo sac. The synergites may be fertilized by sperm from an additional pollen tube or develop without such fusion in Argimony Mexican and Faciolus vulgaris. Additional embryos may appear from unfertilized synergites and hence applied in nature. Embryos from antipodal cells develop less frequently and all the antipodal embryos may not remain viable. The embryo sac embryo is also originate from the endosperm. These embryos developing from endosperms have been reported in Balanophora alnus. However, the Ernst found that such embryo developed from egg got emptied in cellular endosperm. And the Woodworth in Alnus and other have reported the embryo developed from endosperms. These embryos developed normally from the egg. The origin or arising of embryo from the cell outside the embryo cell. The cell of the nucleus and integuments have also been observed to develop into embryos. The citrus mangifera in Sparanthes and additional embryos have been reported to be developing from inner cells of inner layer of integuments. Such embryos subsequently come to lie in the embryo sac and are nourished by the endosperm. This is all about the origin of embryo in different conditions. So in this slide, we will discuss about their agronomic benefits which we obtain from polyembryonic process. During this polyembryony, plants have increased production and competitiveness because a seed may produce two to six normal plants 
favoring production because of the increase of number of plant and airs per surface unit. Lower production costs because with the same number of seeds, the farmer can have more plant on the per unit area. Due to this polyembryony, the lower storage and transportation costs. It yield performance and population density experiments are needed to evaluate the improvement in grain yield because of polyembryonic maize varieties. These are the agronomical benefits which we obtain from polyembryonic process. Nutritional benefits which we get from polyembryonic. A significant increase in protein Lysine and trimaterial, lysine proteins and oils in polyembryony maize grains compared to those with a single embryo. A positive increase in polyembryonic maize turf, detecting a positive association between polyembryony and oil content which are 22% higher than a native variety. With a high percentage of unsaturated oil and a better relationship between oleic and linoleic acids. The average of crude protein in polyembryonic maize is 10% and was 8% higher than a native variety. This may be attributed to the positive correlation between polyembryony and lipid concentration in the grain. They concluded that the physical and chemical characteristics of polyembryonic maize are within those acceptable ranges for the production of food products such as tortillas and lard. So in this slide, the conclusion which we obtained after polyembryonic procedure. The phenomena of polyembryony gives many advantages which can be used in crop improvement. It provides uniform seedlings for root stocks, which yield consistent results in fruit production. It shows a restoration of the vigor lost after repeat vegetative propagation. Polyembryony has ecological significance as it increases the probability of survival under varied conditions. It is the only practical approach to rise virus-free clones. Disease-free plant can also be obtained by this polyembryony. In spite of significance in plant propagation, polyembryony has a drawback as it interferes with the hybridization program. In hybridization, zygotic embryo is the outcome, but polyembryony hampers the growth of zygotic embryo and thus affects hybridization in plants. It is the drawback of polyembryony which creates by the hybridization program. So this is all about for this lecture and here is the references that are used during the preparation of lecture. I hope through these references you can clear your concepts regarding to polyembryony topic. Thank you.